This is a five line skink. And this is the one I was able to catch. Now take a look at its tail. See, there's a little stub missing there. That means a predator was going after this guy and he dropped the tail like I explained. Now, you'll notice the five line skinks, sometimes they'll be all brown and then sometimes they'll have a bright blue tail. And why is that? Both male and female juvenile five line skinks have blue tails, but as they grow closer to an adult lizard, they lose that blue tail coloration. Females, however, are more likely to retain that blue tail color as they age. Also, females tend to be smaller and lack the orange coloration on their snouts. Why is it that female five-line skinks tend to look so different from the males? That's because of a thing called sexual dimorphism. Sexual dimorphism is the systematic difference in form between individuals of a different sex in the same species. For example, in mammals, it's common for the male of the same species to grow larger than the female, while in many reptiles and amphibians, the opposite tends to be true. But why should animals have differences between the sexes? All animals with two genders are subject to sexual selection, a part of natural selection referring to the process in which one gender of a species chooses its mating partner. Everyone knows about the beautiful male peacock and their mating display. But not everyone knows about the female counterpart being not so pretty. It's mostly dull, brown color, and basically little pattern at all. That's because the burden of sexual selection is on the male peacock. Moreover, there is actually two types of sexual selection going on in a species. When male bucks compete for female doe by way of antler duels, male bucks are competing against other male bucks. This is called intrasexual selection. While with the peacock example, male peacocks put on a mating display used to compete for female pea hen. Yes, I looked that up, that's literally what they're called. So how does all this stuff really fit into sexual dimorphism? When any organism is subject to sexual selection, like natural selection, they contribute directly to the evolution of a species. Let's say a group of female birds choose to only mate with the bright blue male birds. Males might be brown, blue, or even green, but over time you will see only blue birds in the group. And that's because other colored birds always get rejected, while the brightest, bluest birds always link up. You might be thinking to yourself, wouldn't being a bright blue bird be bad, say, for your survival? You know, making it easier for predators to find you? And this is where things can kind of get confusing. It's possible for sexual selection to actually harm an animal's survival. Take the common pheasant, for instance. A male pheasant in the wild lives no longer than 10 months when females can live easily twice as long. But survival in some cases may be less important to a species than reproducing and passing genes to your offspring. A male pheasant's bright coloration demonstrates to the female that he is fit and he's a healthy good choice to father her chicks. And now you know why two members of the same species can look really different. As always, thank you for watching. Go out and tell your friends, today I learned about sexual dimorphism. Oh, and subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks. Ah. Let go, dude.